Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Factory, the Space Engineer's creative time-lapse series where we create complex solutions for uh, really quite simple problems. If you'll remember back in episode one we created a gravity-fed refining system that refines every material with its own refinery and uh, doesn't use any sorters or anything. Well I guess it kind of does at the top but like not in the way you would think. It actually uses physical means to sort everything to their appropriate uh, refineries and you can see that in the background. Uh, and then Last episode we built on that system in order to do some assembling using a physical conveyor which you can actually see in like the bottom of this footage here um, along with like a pushing system for assembling we were able to get some of our assembling components done and just like the refineries every single assembling item has its own assembler so like steel plates and interior plates and like motors they all have their each individual assembler working for them and that's how we're going to continue going forward. Um, so this episode, we're actually going to, to do a couple things. We're going to start off with some, uh, some transformation. We're going to do a complete makeover of the, uh, of the dropper system that we had built in last episode. And then we're going to move on to doing some more assembling for uh, more complex things. So last episode, we only did assembling for, uh, for things that would only require iron. So like the easy stuff. Uh, but this episode, we're going to do things that require iron, nickel, silicon, and cobalt. Basically, the, the, the four uh, refining materials that we have on this side of the, uh, the gra gravity-fed refiner that you see in the background. So like I said, starting off, we're just going to completely rip up the whole dropper system that we had. So we had this cool little dropper system that dropped the iron down, and then it, the iron would pile into like a little dropping uh, arm, which would then push out and then drop the iron onto the belt. But unfortunately that was very slow it was it was inefficient i would rather have a continuous flow of iron going on to the belt um, i think that would help things quite a bit when it comes to the uh the assembler pusher uh at the end of the at the end of the belt um, when that thing's under more load it tends to function better so we're going to completely revamp this um this system now i had a lot of trouble revamping this um it, it turns out that uh when you're dealing with uh, cubular things like the refined iron uh, it only likes the full slopes so the the triangle blocks it does not really like the half slopes it kind of tends to get stuck when you use half slopes so you'll see a lot of instances in this footage where uh, where we tried to use half slopes and ended up getting everything stuck and it didn't work but um, but we did end up using whole slopes we did find a way to make it work uh, um, and, uh, and got everything everything working, and you can see it working here as well. Um, but the, the main problem when it came to that was trying to get it to, uh, to go the distance using whole slopes, because when you're using gravity-fed things like this, uh, you only have so much room before you, uh, before you run out of, I guess, height. That's pretty much the main issue. So, uh, but we, you know, we finally managed to get it working, and, uh, and, and it actually ended up making the pusher assemblers uh, at the end of the belt work much better. Um, where, where last episode we were seeing that they were only getting a couple of materials, uh, or, or rather the first two assemblers were getting most of the iron, and then the second two were getting some iron, and the next two were getting like no iron. Um, with this setup it actually works much better and we get, we see them all getting iron, so, um, so I'm very happy with this makeover. Also it's going to make the transition into, uh, in, into the other assemblers much easier as well, which, uh, which we're now going to switch over to. Everybody get ready because the train wheels are now off. Uh, when we were dealing with iron only things, it was very easy because all we had to do was send iron to point A or from point A to point B and then throw it in assemblers and that was the whole job. But uh, when it comes to iron and other stuff, uh, you have to actually route two different materials or sometimes even more into the same place, which makes life a, a whole lot harder. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing a gravity fed sort of thing. This is what I call the labyrinth because well, mainly because it sounds cool, but also because it is a sort of like maze of, uh, of, of things. And you'll see that as we go on here. Um, it's, it's essentially every material sort of converges, or at least every material on this side, which is iron, silicon, nickel, and cobalt. They all sort of converge in this gravity system thing. And then through a series of trap doors, they go to where they need to go. Now, where do they need to go? I went through and mapped out exactly how many, like all of the materials that you can make in an assembler. And then I actually broke those down into the specific refined pieces that they require. So, you know, you have all those things that require iron only. We took care of those in last episode. But this episode, um, I, I broke them down into three distinct groups um, that, that we could easily manage. Uh, so the first group is easy. It's iron and silicon. So silicon is actually the second uh, refinery. 
Uh, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but we did actually, like I moved those around. So it used to be uh, from top to bottom, the refineries were iron, nickel, uh, cobalt, and then silicon. But after mapping everything out, I found that silicon is a lot more used than nickel. Uh, and then nickel is a lot more used than cobalt. So I actually rearranged them uh, so that we'd have enough height for the silicon, which is used more than nickel, for instance. So um, so yeah, the first, the first group is easy. It's canvas computers, displays, and radio components that only require silicon. So all I've got to do is throw those together and throw them into assemblers, which, I mean, is not terribly easy. But uh, through a series of trap doors in this gravity refined or gravity fed system, we can actually manage to get it to uh, to work. Um, so the iron goes in with the silicon; those go into some assemblers, and those can make those four things. Uh, so the next group is uh, more complex. It's iron and nickel, uh, nickel and silicon, iron, nickel, and silicon, and iron, nickel, and cobalt. So all of those uh, we're going to be putting in. We're, we're grouping those together. So. Uh, and the reason I'm grouping those all together is because only two things require iron and nickel, and then all the other groups, only one thing is made with them. So like, for instance, grids are the only things that use iron, nickel, and cobalt. So uh, we're going to find a way, a little bit later, of grouping those together in, uh, we're actually going to end up going underground. Um, because that is, that is what happens when you do gravity-fed things and you don't account for how high things are going to be. You run out of space, you run out of height more specifically, and you have to end up going underground. And so anyways, I'll show this system off a lot more in the live segment at the end of the time lapse. Um, but you can kind of see it's it's sort of color coded. I tried to keep everything color coded, uh, like all of the lines so that you can see where they're going. Uh, and you can clearly see this one right here is like, it's, it's silicon that's going to meet with iron and you can see exactly where that's happening. And then this is where we're doing the assembling. So um, we have four different assemblers. We're just using a basic uh, sort of uh, splitter plus splitter to uh, to deal with those four assemblers. So the first splitter splits it into two groups and then the next two splitters split it into four, which is the um, the which is how many we need for the assemblers. Collectors pick it up, assemblers build it, and presto, you have stuff. But of course, of our three groups and of the two that we're going to be working on today, that one was the easier one. Now let's mess a little bit more with the other two groups, which are the more complex ones. So I did talk about running out of space because of a lack of height. Um, and that is a real issue, and we're, that's that's what we're dealing with uh, now. So pretty much the, um, the the gravity fed is nice because it doesn't require a lot of machinery. It only requires gravity. It doesn't actually increase your sim speed that much. Um, it's nice, but it requires a lot of height. It really requires kind of a vertical factory. So uh, so we do start running out of uh, out of distance here, um, since we have to deal with those full uh, full angled blocks to accommodate those uh, cubed pieces. The the cube refinery pieces that come out. But anyways, so this is kind of where we start running out of height and we start actually going underground. Um, and you'll see the word here, it says um, underground transport. Uh, let me explain essentially what that is and I'll show it in the live segment as well. It's not really done yet, or actually more like it's not really started yet, but um, uh, but you can kind of see where, where it's going. So the underground transport is essentially everything else. So I, I said there were three groups. There's the, uh, there's the iron silicon, there's the more complex iron, silicon, nickel, cobalt stuff. And then there's the everything else, which requires like uh, uranium and platinum. That is where the underground transport's gonna go. So essentially a little bit of each material is gonna go to this massive underground uh, conveyor belt, which is going to transfer it pretty much over to where all the other material materials are. So where the platinum is and the uranium and gold, uh, it'll transfer it over there. So that's like something to work on maybe next episode or the episode after that. Definitely not something we're doing this episode, but at least I want to prepare for it. Uh, and then the other bit of underground we're doing is, be is the, um, the iron, nickel, cobalt, and silicon stuff. Uh, and that is stuff we're going to do this episode. Um, so we do go underground quite, uh, quite a bit here. In fact, you'll even see that our labyrinth gets way more complex once we add in the, uh, the nickel and the cobalt. It's, um, you, you can hardly see what's going on, but hopefully the color coding kind of makes it a little easier to see uh, which pieces are going where. So now we're finally moving underground, and you'll see that uh, uh, we have we have five assemblers this time instead of four, so it makes the, the sorting a little bit more confusing, but uh, we, we find a way to make it work, um, sort of. In, basically, instead of having the splitter at the top that splits either left or right, we have it just continuously rotate, which allows some of the materials to just flow straight down instead of being uh, routed left and right. It'll just like go straight down into the middle assembler. 
Um, so that's how we have it set up. You'll also notice that one of our assemblers is blue. Um, the reason for that is because there's only one thing here that requires cobalt. So, uh, so we're just routing the cobalt directly into that one. We don't really want the cobalt to get into any of the other assemblers that don't require the cobalt. So, uh, so that, that's how that works, essentially. All in all, this five-piece assembling system works pretty well. After getting our underground assembling working, we were left with one final boss of our underground task. Uh, and that boss is moving the assembled materials above ground again. Um, because I don't want to have the assembled materials just kind of sit here, I want them to be able to be loaded onto a truck and then, uh, and then brought to wherever they need to go, which is something that we talked about last episode but haven't yet implemented. So, uh, so what we need to do is we need to essentially bring those, uh, those assembled materials, which you can see on the left, to the red cross that you can see on the right, and then above ground. And I thought about a couple of ways of doing this. Um, I, I, the first thing I thought of was maybe using multi multiple machines that would kind of hand off to each other. So like one machine would grab the stuff from the assembler, and then it would move over and then give it to another machine, which would pull it toward the red cross, which would then like dump it into another machine, which would raise it up and then finally give it to the uh, the containers that are waiting above ground. But uh, ultimately, I, I figured out that like it, it's probably easier to just use one machine um, that does it all. And uh, and so that's what we did. We built one machine uh, out of pistons that can both that can go in pretty much the X, Y and Z direction. So the X direction is what I, what I designated as like coming toward us and away from us. Uh, and then the Y direction is going up and down. So like above ground and below ground. And then the Z direction uh, would be going toward the assemblers and away from the assemblers. So um, so I, I built this one machine that sort of does that, and it took a couple of, uh, of tries to get it to work, but um, but ultimately it, it does work pretty well. Um, it's able to do all of the movements that I need it to, and it's able to do them pretty quickly too. So it's, it's definitely more efficient than it would be to use like one machine. Uh, finally, I added a couple of lights and some wheels to the machine to make it look a little bit cooler uh, and more industrial. So the wheels just go on the bottom, and make it kind of look like it's like, I don't know, like a motor driven thing or something. The wheels don't actually do anything, they have zero friction, but uh, and then the lights have like a little offset so that a couple of lights blink at a different rate so it doesn't look like a perfect uh, synchronized thing. Um, but yeah, ultimately it works pretty well and I'm proud of it and uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is going to be the end of the time lapse section and we're going to move right on into the, uh, the real time section. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the live segment. I really hope you enjoyed the time lapse. Um, we got a lot done this episode, although I wish we could have done more. Uh, the holidays kind of came up on me, I wanted to get this episode out, so a lot of these things are uh, sort of unfinished, but provide a good idea of where things are going uh, in the future, I suppose. Um, okay, so you would have seen this all in the time lapse, but I do want to, uh, to show you guys around to show you what we've done. Um, so as far as this goes, the, the pusher, it actually works a lot better when it comes to... Actually, you know what? Let me put some materials in here so I can show you. All right, there we go. There's some no normal iron. I guess, you know, I should probably start with this. Uh, oh, that's that's looking a bit funky. But, um, but we did completely redo this iron slide here. I didn't like the dropper idea. Instead, I like what we have now, which is more of a constant flow. So the things go on to... And that, hope, I hope that stays... Yeah, see, so things aren't actually falling out, which they were quite a bit... Well, okay, some of the things are falling out, which I guess is why we have those catchers over there. But um, but on the other one, it was like half of the things weren't making it to the slide. But now that we have a continuous flow, um, well, it, it just looks a lot better. And also, you'll, you'll notice that the, uh, the pusher will work a lot better as well. Um, so yeah, I added this, uh, this cool little housing for the, the pusher piece, just because it looks nicer. Um, and then, of course, I did that change over there. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll see the, uh, the pusher in action here with, a um, with a more continuous load and we'll see how it actually works a little bit better. So we'll, we see this, I mean, it's kind of slow, but yeah, so that one went into the second row. This one's are going to go into the third and fourth row, perhaps. So we do see iron going into these ones that were previously not getting any iron at all. Um, okay, so these guys got stuck on there, but they're going to get pushed by this little, uh, this lip right here. And then they're going to get pushed down to uh, to the bottom. And those ones should probably go into the uh, the first and the second ones here. Some of these are actually getting stuck, but I imagine they will unstuck themselves once it once it pulls back. So again, you know, it's not a perfect design, but it does work a lot better, I think. I'm pulling back. Let's see. Uh, let's see if these ones get unstuck and start going into the into the thing. It's really uh, they're getting stuck because I use these half uh, half corner pieces. 
Um, it works a lot better if I use the full angle pieces, but the problem with the full angle pieces is you don't have enough, um, you don't have enough room. So I'd, I guess I'd have to move these back and then use the full angle pieces like I used right here. That's the problem that I had when I was building this thing, is that I was trying to get more, more, uh, distance, since the, the conveyor is all the way over here. I was trying to get more distance using those half corner pieces, uh, like these ones right here, but uh, I was finding that they'd get stuck, so I'd have to use these, these full corner ones. Uh, but anyways, yeah, we did that stuff. We added the second side here, which is going to be the iron that's going to go to all of the other things. So we have iron only over there, and then all of the other iron. And then, in fact, there's an even more all of the other iron as well. <laughs> Underground transport. Um, but yeah, we have these things. It, it's kind of intricate. It's actually very intricate, and it took a long time to try and figure out. But uh, but we have this section of trap doors. So uh, this right here will, uh, will turn like that, so the iron can go this way. Uh, we have this trap door which can either be up like that allowing the iron over or it can be down like this which will uh, trap the iron down here um, then over here we have another trap door um, right there and that, that'll do the same thing and then finally we have a third sort of switcher it's not really a trap door but it'll switch the way the iron is going um, based on where we want it uh, so the places we want it speaking of which we either want it right here which is the iron and silicon uh, stuff so iron goes down it meets with the silicon right here if the silicon were turned this way, it would meet with the silicon that comes that way. Uh, or if the silicon was turned this way, and all those trap doors are up, like so, it would go down here, and that would lead to... Uh, where does that lead? That leads somewhere that I haven't done yet. <laughs> like I said, it is not completely done yet. Actually, wait, am I, am I using that? Okay, so I did just check with my notes. I actually don't think I'm using this area at all. Uh, it's it's basically got the room for silicon to come down and then iron to come down as well. But then there's nothing that follows. So I think I decided that I would uh, I would stick what was going to go here into this one right here. Um, so I th think... Yeah, that's got to be what it is. And I'm actually missing a, a trapdoor here. So this trapdoor is going to have to move uh, right here and then it'll be, it'll be finished. But again, you know, it's unfinished because I, uh, I ran out of time for the holidays. Uh, but so let's uh, let's check this out right here. I, I want to show this underground area before I show the other underground area um, So if the iron travels through everything and then chooses this route and you'll notice that all of them by the way have a slide that goes down underground uh, Right under where I am if it goes down there. It's gonna go to what is currently not uh, not an existing um, Conveyor so it's going to be a four-way conveyor, which is gonna be kind of ambitious uh, and it's going to probably destroy my sim speed but the idea is that it's going to be a four-way conveyor that contains iron, nickel, cobalt, and uh, and silicon. And what it's going to do is it's going to move those things over in that direction. And the reason it's doing that is because that's where we have all of the other materials here that we're going to be able to use. So for things like gravity components, medical components, missiles, radar components, etc., that require maybe some uranium, maybe some uh, maybe some platinum, uh, that's that's we're going to have that conveyor kind of going underground and moving it to this area. That's for a future episode. That's going to be very difficult to do. So, um, I guess stay tuned for that. That's probably not even next episode stuff. That's probably, uh, the episode after that. Um, but anyway, so, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the unfinished kind of placement area for that. That will eventually be a massive conveyor. Um, at least that's the idea. Things can change between now and then. Um, but anyways, let me show you the final underground area that we're doing. So if this right here was turned that way instead, it would push the iron down there, and then this would be turned... I don't even have a turner for this, but it would be turned facing down that way, uh, allowing the nickel to come down here. What would happen is... Oh, I'm stuck in here. We would enter this underground area, which is the, uh, which is the uh, swappers, or the, the filters, I guess, uh, for things like solar cells, detector components, motors, power cells, and grids. Uh, those are the five here. Um, they need iron, nickel, silicon, and cobalt. So pretty much all of the stuff that's been made on this side is going to be right here. Uh, now here's the thing. We actually make this stuff over here, but we need to get it to a uh, to what I call... Well, I don't actually call it anything. To what I will call a, uh, a distribution center. Um, and that would be essentially these things right here. So once we make the material, we obviously want to bring it somewhere. So we have, uh, we, we have like little truck stops that we will be able to use. And in fact, I might consolidate this so that these are both on the same side, uh, kind of like this one is. But, uh, but yeah, I want to be able to bring the materials somewhere to do something with them. So that is what these are, the distribution centers. Um, but I need to actually get those materials down there. For this one, it was easy because the, the materials are made on site. So you don't have to bring them anywhere. But for this one, 
The materials are made all the way over here, and I need to be able to get them all the way over there. So what I did is I designed this kind of, uh, I, I don't really know what to call it, a, a crane maybe? It's not really a crane, but like, just a big tool, I guess. Uh, and, and, it, and it actually moves everything for me. So here's what it does. First, I hit the X. I, 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 uh, I divided this into X right here, Z right there, and then Y right there. So kind of like a, kind of like a 3D graph. So we're going to hit the X right here, and X is going to start going forward. And I've, I've added these little wheels. They don't really do anything. But like if it starts bending, I guess, the wheels might take some load off. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, we hit the X. It goes all the way over here. Then we hit the Z. And it will move into position to grab. Finally, they will have like timers or something and they will like drop things in there uh, and they'll start filling up. Next, we hit the Z once again to move it back out of the area. So it comes right back. Once it's back, we hit the X again to pull it all the way back towards us. And again, we have our wheels not doing anything. And then finally, we're going to hit the uh, the Y, which will get it to push upward. And that will push it into position over here. Once it comes all the way up top, all we have to do is drop the iron, well, drop the drop the materials that we made uh, out of this thing right here, which will be set to, um, to uh, push, whatever it's called. Uh, what's it called? Push? No, it's not called push. Hang on. Let me look at this. Okay. Throw out. Yeah, we'll have throw out, and it will, uh, it will throw everything out into these things right here, which will get thrown into these cargo containers, which will finally be pushed into here for a distribution truck to come in. So uh, so yeah, eventually everything here, everything that we've talked about will be uh, used with uh, timers, but I haven't had time to set up the timers. It's gonna be very complex. In fact, I just need to even finish this thing uh, before I can set up the timers. But yeah, even this even this giant conveyor will, will be set with timers. And it's actually kind of simple for the timers, so we'll just have like push X, once X is down, which will be a set amount of time because it's a set speed, we'll hit X, and then we'll hit Z, and then we'll hit X or Z again, then X again, and then Y again. So it's it just over and over with timers. But anyways, that is, I think that's everything that we've worked on. Um, this was obviously the, the, the toughest part, I think. Actually, well, I don't know. I, I'd say equal toughness to, uh, to, to setting up this. this. This was a bit of a pain because I had to get everything to work with gravity and... It was um, it, it, it was really tough. Um, I'm a, let's let's try to send some materials down. It's not finished, so I really don't know uh, how this is going to work. But I want to try to send uh, materials down to this one right here, trapdoor like that. So it'll come down and go into this trapdoor, and we'll have iron and silicon both meet. That's uh, that's the idea. Let's see if we can get that set up. All right, we've got iron and silicon both coming down in the same place. Let's see if it's actually working. I don't know. That is the, I believe that's silicon, isn't it? Yeah, we have silicon wafers coming down. I don't know where our iron has gone. Have we used it all already? I put like a hundred thousand in there. Let me just spam it. I guess it comes down in way more than I thought. Wait, did I just put silicon in there? Okay, I think I just put silicon in there, but it's fine because they're the same size. So if they work, they work. It's actually, you know, it's not bad. I think it obviously needs some like siding, like uh, some windows to keep it from going all like all over the place. But it is actually working pretty well. Let's check if all of them have silicon. You have iron and silicon. Uh, you have iron and silicon. You have iron and silicon, and you have iron and silicon. I think this one had a little bit less iron. Yeah, it did. Oh, but that's probably because it used it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that is kind of cool. So this this actually does work a little bit. And let's see if I if I push this like that, will it actually? Well, okay. It's, of course, it stops right when I try that. But uh, let's put some more in there. And of course, we're putting silicon because we're crazy. <laughs> and see what happens. Okay, so it does look like we're probably going to need those timer blocks to lock this in place. Uh, otherwise, it goes down. But yeah, it's going in the right place. And if I wanted to send it off into nowhere land, okay. So it does work pretty well. It actually works exactly as I intended it to, other than that little that little drop error. But yeah. Okay, so that that is I guess that's that. We do actually have a pretty pretty good working thing uh, for next episode. And next episode we'll finish all this stuff up. Uh, we'll get those timer blocks set up, and maybe we'll even work on one of these distribution things, or we'll try and work on that conveyor. I really don't know. Uh, but anyways, guys, this is 
Space Factory. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like. Put any comments and suggestions uh, down in the comments section below. I hope you guys have an amazing holiday uh, because that is around the time that this video will be released. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the new year.